we all stand in this place. We're going to worship it, but we're going to praise. Let's set the atmosphere for the message. Title, Good Morning, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we wait on you. <laughs> we wait on you. Oh. Jesus, 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 we wait for you. 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 Come and take a hold. We wait for you. Oh, we wait for you. Here we are. We'll see. Here we are, standing in your presence. Here we are, standing in your presence. Oh, hey, hey, just me, we want more. 
of the Lord is in this place. The presence of the Lord is in this place. If you've never heard the Lord speaking to you, some of you have heard his voice already. Some of you have. Tonight, you are going to encounter, you're going to encounter 
the difference when you hear the voice of the Lord speaking tonight. Hallelujah, Jesus. Do you know that the voice of the Lord is like this? The times when we sing and it's a noise, and the other times when it comes like this, it's a quietness in the spirit. If you close your eyes, I bet you the reason why we close our eyes is not because we're spiritual. We close our eyes just to cut out every other thing that's happening. So if you close your eyes, then you will encounter that voice to tonight. You will hear him speaking to you. In some cases, it could be audible. But the problem is, we are so cluttering our ears with things that we hear so that we cannot hear the voice of the Lord speaking. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. So, right now, just take a minute. Everybody, just close your eyes. And just hear what's going on in your spirit. I know, I know people like to see what's going on. For now, just hear. Okay? Just hear. Close your eyes. And just, any people watching my television via live streaming, I want you to close your eyes too. I want you to hear in the spirit what do you hear? Sometimes we hear the things that happened just before we left. Other times we hear good, vo good voices. Sometimes we just hear a big noise. But there are things that's trying to stop you hearing the voice of the Lord. This whole evening, I just sensed the Spirit of God in this place. The whole evening, I sensed God speaking and speaking and speaking, and His voice. Now, sometimes we hear a voice like mine. You can hear a voice like mine. Other times, it is just this quietness in the Spirit. So I want everybody right to the back. Just keep your eyes closed, and it's here the Spirit speaking because He's got a voice and He's ready to speak to you tonight. He's ready to speak. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Sometimes when I ask people, how do you feel now? They say, I feel like I'm shaky. Like a shaky, it's like an electrifying feeling. Other times, you say, what is going on? And you don't know what's going on. Please be seated. We're going to go on now. Just be seated. Okay? You don't have to stand. We, can, you know, we don't have to work up the Spirit of God at all. You will hear tonight for yourself. Because this is the good thing of the Spirit of God. We don't have to work Him up. He's just here. He's here. Because he says, we're two or three gathered in my name. There am I in the midst of thee. Sorry, bad signal up here. Um, um, wait, 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 is someone playing tricks? Someone hiding somewhere? Okay. Who's some hearing? Hello, hello. Can, can you listen to me? Can uh, you listen to yeah, me? Hello? I hear you. Okay. Hi. Okay. Hi, okay. How, who, who are you? Um, who do you think I am? I am the Holy Spirit. I am here. Um, that, that person I read about in the Bible is Pentecostal or something? Yes, I'm okay, that okay. dude. Okay. Yes, I'm that dude. All right, okay. now I came into your life when you made friends with Jesus, you know, your besties, your secret handshake. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now you um, see, now that's me. 
All right. Okay. All right, all right, all right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, I'm here, and I'm always here, everywhere. Um, always. Yes, Is you, always. You in my life now? Yes, I'm in your life. Okay. Um, when, like a minute ago, I, I did something bad. You, you were watching? Unfortunately, yes. Yeah, please don't do that again. Because um, uh, okay, okay, I have to watch okay, those okay. things. I have to watch you when you do everything. So sorry for that. Please forgive me. Yeah, you're forgiven. Cool, cool. Thank you. Thank All right, you. don't do it again. Um, yes, um, okay. Now, my job is to remind you that Jesus loves you. And I'm supposed to be your comforter and guide you whenever you listen. Thank when, you. Thank you. When you decide to listen, obviously, because obviously you don't always. A minute ago, uh, you proved that. Um, yeah, so please listen to me from now on. So I can oh. actually help you. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Cool. So I'm here to remind you that God loves you and he's never going to leave you. And okay. neither am I. I'm always going to be there for you. So you're going to be there for me, protecting me? Yes. You're going to provide for me? Yes. You're going to do all these, these things I ask of you? Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. You don't have to thank me. That's my job. Woo. Now, this was just a little skit, but it's actually the truth. This is how it is. Everybody... When you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, guess what? Immediately the Holy Spirit moves in. And he sits there. And the Bible says a lot of interesting things, but I just want us to quickly go through a few Bible scriptures just to prove to you how real the voice of the Lord is. Okay, let's quickly go to Acts 9. There we are reading the story in Acts 9. It says, and asked him, for the letters, okay, go to verse 1, verse 1, verse 1, verse 1, and this, this is the Mac that goes slower into the change over, Acts 9, okay, well, the story is, uh, let's go stick to the verse 2 and ask him for the letters to, oh, there we go, back to verse 1, meanwhile, Saul's still drawing his breath hard from threatening and murderous desire against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and then he asked the high priest, verse 2, just keep on, and he asked, the, uh, he asked the high priest for the letters to the synagogues at Damascus so that if he found any belongings, um, I can't read that script, it's too small, and if he found any belonging to the way, men or women, he might bring them to bound them to Jerusalem, verse 3. Now, as he went on his way, he approached Damascus, and suddenly, I want everybody, you know what the preachers always do, the suddenly thing. But I like the suddenly thing, because it's a good word. Okay, and so I want you to say suddenly. Okay, that, no, 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 you can't say it like that, because I need you to say that you mean it, all right? One, two, three. That's almost, almost. And suddenly, a light from heaven flashed around him. Said, and now, verse four. And falling to the ground, he heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, what did he hear? What did he hear? What did he hear? A voice. He heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Listen, this is a scary part because this man had no cooking clue what was going on. With him were other soldiers. They were on their way to go and kill more Christians. And on the way there, while they were going, this, this scenario happened. Listen, I don't know what you would have done, but when this light comes alone, I've been in lightning, heavy lightning, that I was petrified out of myself, but this guy saw this light, and when he saw it, a voice said to him, why are you doing what you're doing? So there, already the Holy Spirit started speaking. And then continuing from there, verse 5, and then he speaks to the voice. Very much what you saw here happening on the stage. He spoke to the voice. He said, who are you, Lord? And he said, the voice said to him, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. Verse 6. And then it's the voice said to him, but rise and enter the city and you will be told what you are to do. Now, this is an amazing piece of scripture. Because sometimes we're so um, re religious and we're not religious or we are Christian or we're not Christian. But we don't know always whether we do the right thing. And sometimes some of us, we say, Lord, speak to me in a voice. Man, if the Lord had to speak to you tonight in a voice audible like he did with Paul, I think some of us would have died on the spot. Let's go to 1 Kings 19. 1 Kings 19. 
in, in this chapter, he said, and this is Elijah. Elijah was in a bad place, and, and Elijah was sitting in a, in a, in a cleft of a rock, and, he, and then suddenly he was speaking to the Lord. The Lord said to him, he's going to come through, and this is what happens. And after the earth quake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, the sound of a low whisper. What is it saying? The sound of a low whisper. Next verse. Now, there was a disciple that didn't know, where are we now? How did we get back to Acts? We are in Kings. There you go. And after that, a sound of a whisper. And when Elijah heard the sound of a whisper, can we do a whisper? Everybody, because when you gossip, you whisper, you know. We don't speak loud when we gossip. The Holy Spirit seemed to be doing that here in the scripture. He says, listen. The moment that Elijah heard the sound of the whisper, the Bible says he wrapped his face in a cloak because he was too afraid to see the Lord. He went like this. He wrapped his face in a cloak and he went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. And behold, there came a what? What came from heaven? Can I hear you? A voice, yes. A voice came from heaven and it said, What are you doing here, Elijah? If that was me, with the thunder and the lightning and the wind, everything, I would have already been so afraid. Then let's quickly go to Acts 10 verse 19. This is very interesting. This, you know what the Bible is saying? When you go read the book of Acts, and you see how many times the voice of the Lord spoke to the people. Then you'll see it's really an amazing phenomena that we are really filled with the Spirit. And they are, there's a voice speaking to you says, when Peter entered, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. Verse 26. It's actually Acts 10 verse 19. Verse 19. Acts 10 verse 19. I just want you to see these scriptures because it's very important sometimes to know that these things have happened and that they are real. And this is in the New Testament. So it's very important. Acts 10, we got it. Acts 10 verse 19. It's okay. They, those people are doing a phenomenal job, I promise you. They're doing a great job. Acts 10, okay, so it seems to, there it goes. And while Peter was earnestly revolving the vision in his mind and meditating on it, the Holy Spirit said to him, Behold, three men are looking for you. How amazing is that? When you read these three, and the Bible is for, you, we were singing earlier about, you'll send the fire and I will bring the sacrifice. That was when, that was on the mountain and when the Lord spoke and he said, don't sacrifice your son. There was a voice saying, the Bible is full of voices speaking. But you know, today we can sometimes hear an audible voice. I remember last year when I was in England, I uh, had to catch so many different trains and then I, I came to Paddington Station and I had to get onto the circle route for those who've been to England. And uh, as I was on, out of Paddington Station, I had to take the train to the circle route, but I couldn't find my way. And I didn't know where I was. And it was peak hour. And there were thousands of people. It was snowing and it was cold. And people entering and coming in the train, in the train, out the train. They were everywhere. And so I was very... Um, reluctant. I didn't know where I was. I was nervous. I didn't want to ask anybody because they all looked cross. So I walked and as I was walking, just trying to find something that can make me remember where I needed to be. The next thing, as I was walking, a voice came on this side, a voice, an audible male voice came on this side of my shoulder and the voice said to me, turn back, go to your left, there's an escalator. When you get into the escalator, you go to the top, you will know where you should be. And I said to the voice, thank you, I am lost. I mean, there was nobody talking to me. I didn't see a single soul and it was a clear, audible voice. By the time I got into the, the train and I sat down, I realized that was the voice of the Lord speaking to me. It was an angel he sent or a voice of the Spirit, but it was an audible voice telling me exactly where to go. So sometimes these voices, I want you to quickly, let's look at Psalm 32 verse 8 and 9. 
You know, there are sounds everywhere. There are sounds. You just listen to this. Listen to this. Can you hear the sound of the music? You hear the sound of the I want you all to go, hmm. Just so. Do you hear the sounds of the voices? And when you listen to these voices, you can actually hear. There are voices. There's a guitar. There's a keyboard. There's even a drum. There are bass guitars. Do you hear it? You know, this is the amazing thing of being in the presence of the Lord. Because sometimes we are so cluttered with noise, but He wants to speak to you. So if we go to the book of Psalms, 32 verse 8 and 9. Psalms. Psalms 32, verse 8 and 9. Psalm 32, verse 8 and 9. So, the voice of the Lord is something that will draw you. It will draw, you know what the life today is so about the supernatural? Let's look at that. Who is that speaking here? I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. Who is speaking there? It's the Holy Spirit will do that. It's God saying, I will instruct you. But he, said, he says, I'm sending you the comforter. This is what you heard earlier on. On the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit came, Jesus told the, the, the people, the disciples, he said, I want you to go to the upper room. I want you to go and wait there in the upper room. When you wait there, I will send you the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. And this is exactly what he said. He said, and that Holy Spirit will teach you and he will guide you. And he says, when you receive the Holy Spirit, you will be filled with power. Suddenly, your life will take on a different meaning. It will not be the same as it was. Let's go to John 14, verse 16 and 17. 14, verse 16 to 17. John 14, verse 16 to 17. For those who are watching my live streaming, you know there are so many different sounds. I remember going to the World Cup, the soccer World Cup. You remember that? Who, who, who went to the soccer, the, the World Cup, FIFA World Cup? Was it, it was phenomenal. I even thought, you know, they were drinking so many beers, the people. But I tell you, the excitement without the beers would have been even as great. Because what I heard was vuvuzela. Remember vuvuzela? I even blew it myself. You go, and people said, don't go there. It will make you deaf. Money didn't make me deaf at all. I enjoyed the atmosphere. It was fantastic. I remember my favorite team was, um, my favorite team is Brazil. And I remember when Kaka was sent off the field. I cried. I was so sad for Kaka to be sent off the field. He's a Christian. I wanted him to stay on. I remember the atmosphere. Listen, you could come miles from the stadium and you would hear the people screaming. You heard the people laughing. You heard the vuvuzelas. You heard the excitement. There were sounds in the air. And then there are many times that I go to a place. Let's read this. John 14 verse 16. It says, And I will ask the Father and he will give you another comforter. Look at what that comforter is doing. He's your counselor. He's your helper. He's your intercessor. He's your advocate. He's your strengthener. And he's your standby. And this is what it says, that he may remain with you forever. It's like that voice. Did you hear it? He will remain with you forever. He's on the inside of you. So let's just turn the music totally down. Even if everything is quiet, there's still a noise happening. I remember hiking in the Tsitsikoma, and at one point I said, shh, everybody. And this is what I heard. It was amazing. It seems like the garden, the, the gardens in the Tsitsikoma is growing by itself when it's quiet. The ants were running. You could hear every movement. You could hear the water falling, everything. And it's amazing how that atmosphere changes your heart. 
And then I, I remember going to a funeral. That's not a happy atmosphere. I've been to a funeral where they buried, you can play now again, where they buried a little baby. I sat there. I think I cried the loudest of all the people. I cried so they asked me to pray, pray and I couldn't pray. Because the atmosphere, and the, you, could, you can hear sadness even if nobody cries. It's like it's there. And then you can go to a, a place where there's just been, you know, when in, in September 9-11, I remember <coughs> Charlene, my daughter, she worked in America and she had to come back on the day, 9-11. That day, the 9th of September, 2011. Yes, Charlie? Yeah, one year, huh? 2001. So the morning, I got a phone call from somebody, and they said to me, Marianne, where's Charlene? So I said, she's boarding within the next hour. She'll be boarding. She said, she's not boarding. I said, why not? She said, the, all the airports in America are closed. I said, no, man. I still went to Pastor Jimmy. He said, ach, man, come on, America is a big place. They won't close all the airports. We, she phoned me again. She said, go on to CNN. Please go. As we, Pastor Jimmy and I, we in the back, we switched the, TV, the, 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 the computer on to CNN just when the next aircraft went into the next building. The sound, the people screaming, the sound. Even when everything was over, they showed people coming out of the dust, looked like dust men. The sound was overwhelming. Do you know what? The sound of the spirit is very much the same. It's not like the trauma. Because there's something about the sound of the spirit that will supersede and overtake any other sound you have ever heard in your life. The sound of the spirit. You know what? The sound of the Spirit is very much like your radio. Where are the cell phones? I want everybody that's got cell phones. Just lift your cell phones. Lift your cell phones. No selfie moment. Just lift your cell phones. Come on. Show us the cell phones. There go some cell phones. Yes, you've got your cell phone here. And some of you, you've been chatting on it while the meeting is on anyway. You may as well show your cell phone. You go, no Facebook moment, now show yourself. Even if you go <coughs> and you switch that cell phone off right now, that it's off, nothing on it. Has the cell phone stopped? Did the messages on it stop? Is Facebook still continuing? The WhatsApps, are they still coming? When you switch the cell phone back on, what happens? Mine goes crazy. Pastor Mariana was now in America, and her cell phone didn't want to receive anything. And then suddenly in the foyer of a hotel, all the 265 WhatsApps came through. And her phone froze, and froze right there because it couldn't receive the capacity. But this is it. Sometimes you think you're far from God. And guess what? He hasn't switched off. He's still sending the messages. He's still saying, I'm here. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. I'm wanting you to listen to me. It's like a radio. If we switch off all radios now, tonight, did the broadcasting, did the airwaves stop? No, it hasn't. And if you go to your computer and you switch it off, tomorrow when you switch it on, what does it do? It loads. Toot, what happened through the night? Toot, toot, toot. Some of us get blocked emails because we've got so many emails. I've got lots of emails coming through. Junk mail. Unbelievable. But they come through. But let me tell you something. If you switch your, compu your computer off, it's still operating. Because it's electronic. It's wired to receive. It stores things in a place until you switch on. But here's something else that's very important with your computer and with your cell phone. You have to have Wi-Fi. You have to have what? Wi-Fi. If you don't have Wi-Fi, you cannot receive all those messages because your data will not last. Because we all have limited data. And sometimes with our spirit, we have limited data. We just go and buy 10 rand airtime. How far does 10 rand take a person? Or 20 rand, 30 rand. I think the smallest amount is 30 rand. Hmm? 
for? $7.50. Oh, okay, what if? You can buy your airtime and you can have a bit of airtime, but I tell you, when you come to a place of Wi Fi, McDonald's, free advert. You go to McDonald's, you've got an hour free Wi Fi. You can go onto their number and you can quickly do some downloading and checking Facebook and chat on everything. And so tonight, no McDonald's, you have to go to Connection. There's free pizzas there. But you know what? You need Wi Fi. Let me tell you something about the Spirit when we were singing like this. Did you sense the presence of God? Did you sense something was happening in the room? This is very much how the Spirit of God is. Let's go to verse 26, the same book. John 14, verse 26. John 14, verse 26. There's something about the Spirit of God. Do you know what? You have to practice hearing the Spirit of God. He says, but the Helper, do you see? The Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you in all things and bring to remembrance, to your remembrance, all that I've said to you. How many times have you in your life felt, I wonder if that's the right thing. You know, if you switch on that pornography, then you know in your spirit, I shouldn't be doing this. That is called grieving the Holy Spirit. It's actually that moment that the Holy Spirit cries. He really cries. The Bible says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Or when you tell a lie, or you blatantly gossip about somebody, or when you steal, when you take that drugs, you hide the drugs somewhere in the house, or when you cheat on your spouse, or when you do things that you know against the Word of God, it is against the Word of God, but you do it, you're grieving the Holy Spirit, and you feel unhappy about it in your spirit. Who is that speaking to you? That's the Holy Spirit. But there are times that you will be sleeping at night and suddenly you have a dream. And you wake up and you know that dream was from the Holy Spirit. He dreamed. That that I just dreamed was a warning. I remember one night I dreamed that Charlene and I were driving in the car and I dreamed we were coming around the corner. And as we came around the corner, a motorbike came from, be, from the front, right ahead of us, right. And the next thing, the motorbike went right between, in the middle of the car, went right over the car in my dream. So the next morning I said to Charlene, was it yay or Heather? One of you, Heather, Heather. I said to Heather, I said, Heather, we need to pray because God gave me a warning that there's going to be an accident when you and I are driving. So we did pray. But about two weeks later, I came around that same corner when a motorbike came head on for us. And as the motorbike came, Heather said, Mommy, your dream. And I said, we protected. The next thing, the motorbike started skidding like this, skidding, skidding, went right off and missed us totally. Let me tell you, that's the Holy Spirit. There are times that you wonder what transaction to do. I tell you what, you can ask the Holy Spirit to guide you, because that's what the Bible says. He will guide you and he will teach you. There are many times in our lives that we need to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. And yes, right now I'm speaking to you. Guess what? It's the Holy Spirit. Because sometimes he'll use me. Sometimes he'll use this band like he did tonight when the Holy Spirit was moving so. That's the Holy Spirit. There are different ways that he speaks. You know what? There are times that if you go in the Bible that he speaks with thunder. The other times he speaks like a wind. The Bible talks about the wind of the Spirit. Then the other times it's like water. And then it's like hot oil. You feel it. The times that you hear a voice and the times that you just hear it here in your spirit. And right now, as I'm speaking to you, the Spirit of God, Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God is speaking to people. I don't want you to focus on the singing. We're going to keep that quiet. I want everybody to keep their eyes closed. Everybody, just keep your eyes closed. And I want you to focus on what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to you. What is He saying to you? 
What is it taking you right now? Because the Spirit of God is gentle. And the Spirit of God is moving in this place. And His voice is speaking in your ears right now. And sometimes the Spirit of God says, My son, my daughter, you've got issues you haven't dealt with. You haven't forgiven who you need to forgive. Sometimes the Spirit says, I want you to come to a place where you spend more time with me in my presence. Sometimes the Spirit of God says, I need you to read my word that you can get to know me better. What is he saying to you right now? people that are filled with the Holy Spirit and everybody else, just raise your hands because we don't have to work this, but just raise your hand. You know, if you keep your eyes closed and your hands raised, you're basically saying I surrender. I surrender to Jesus. Just raise your hands. And just receive what is happening in your spirit now. Hallelujah, Jesus. Some of you feel that it's like almost shaking inside of you. Can you hear the voice of the Lord speaking to you? Some of you, the Lord saying to you, I want you to come and fix what you have done wrong. Hallelujah, Jesus. Some of us are saying, my child, my son, my daughter, you've grieved my spirit when you played around with pornography. You've grieved my spirit when you took those drugs. You've grieved my spirit when you thought of committing suicide. You've grieved my spirit when you were hurting your family by the words that you said. You've grieved my spirit by allowing things in your life that you know is not my role for you. You've grieved my spirit when you walked away from my presence. And tonight the Holy Spirit says, come my son and daughter, I need time with you. The voice of the Lord speaks to people here tonight. If you say, Maria, I, I sense it, it's in me. I can sense the presence of God inside of me. I sense it. I know I've heard the voice of God. I just want you to raise your hand. Just where you are, just raise your hand and say, I heard the voice of the Lord. I heard him speaking to me. What is he saying? There's some people raising. He's saying, I heard the Lord speaking. Let's all stand and sing this Holy Spirit. We can sing this. Just enter in totally. You've got five minutes. Just five minutes. Let's just enter in. If you hear the Spirit of God speaking, I want you to yield to the voice of the Spirit. Yield. Healed to the voice of the Spirit tonight. You say, Marianne, I need a touch from God. I, I don't know even, I can't get to where you are. I want you to come here. I want to pray with you. You say, I need a touch from God. Come here. I want to pray with you. I want to pray with people tonight so that you can sense more the presence of God in your life. Come forward. If you say, I need a touch from the Lord. I need, hallelujah, Jesus. The rest, let's stand and enter in. This place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence, Lord. More people. You say, Marianne, I need a touch from God. Just come. Just come forward. Come, come flood this place and fill the I know there are people here tonight. The Spirit of God has spoken to you. Do not grieve the Spirit of God. Do not grieve Him. Do not grieve the Spirit of God in this place. 
You say, yes, I'm okay. I've done everything right. But you felt how God's Spirit spoke to you. Just come forward and just let's pray with you. Surely there isn't just one gentleman. Surely there are more people saying, I need, I need to hear from the Lord better. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come bless this place and build the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for to be over. If there's anybody here tonight saying, Marianne, I need to be free from addictions. Pornography, cigarettes, drugs. I even thought of committing suicide. I want you to come here. We want to pray with you. <laughs> if you thought of suicide, come on, it's not a shame. Many people think about that when they go through hard times. But let's get rid of that thing that's holding you back. Come forward in Jesus' name. I call on you. Don't stand there. Don't stand there. Don't, you, don't grieve the Spirit of God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. I see it. I see a young man. I see a young man. I see you sitting in your room and you're saying that life is not worth living. I see you saying that you are going to yourself. You speak to yourself. I'm going to end this life as soon as people are out of the house. If that you are here, and you are here tonight because the Spirit of God is telling me that you are here tonight. You've been really considering strongly to kill yourself. I see somebody else playing with pornography. Listen, this Lord said to me right from the beginning, He's speaking tonight to people to be free from addictions. If there's pornography, you have to come because it's not a shame. It's a shame to grieve the Spirit of God. That is a shame. So just come. Let us pray with you. So the person that says, I've been as a young man, you've been feeling that you want to commit suicide, that life is not worth it. There's somebody else here. Your finances is in such a bad place that you've been considering joining a gang type group that could help you to get out of that predicament you're in. So I want to pray with you because God tonight wants to set you free. He wants to help you and He wants to lead you on a road where things will go better in your life. Come on, don't don't grieve the Spirit of God. Don't grieve the Spirit of God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Jesus, come forward, those people. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm going to count to five, and I would like you to come before I'm finished counting five. Otherwise, this is done. Hallelujah, Jesus. One, two. I know that your heart is shaking at the moment and you're so unsure whether you should come or not. Just come, just come. Three, four, five. Okay. We're going to pray with these people. We'll take them out and pray with them. And I thank them for coming. Hallelujah, Jesus. Father, I thank you that your Holy Spirit is already in this woman, but I pray that you will do more, that you will clear the road up ahead of her, that she will know exactly where to go to. In Jesus' name. Father, the path is open, but Father, she's got crossroads and she needs to make decisions. I pray that you will help her in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Saturate him so that he will... Lord, have you given your life to Jesus? You've given your life to Jesus. My yes, terugval. So we're going to pray. Look here. Look here, the Holy Spirit. He's backslidden and God says, I'm calling you my son. This is the love of God. And there's no condemnation. There's no condemnation. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, that you're bringing the son back to the house. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He's going to pray with you. This. Oh, sorry, the man behind you is going to pray for you. Hallelujah. More of your spirit, Lord. More of your spirit so that she will hear clearly where she's going, what she must do. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, we wait for you. We wait for you. Thank you, Jesus. More of your spirit, more of your spirit. Hallelujah. I just want to say, while they're singing this last song, to hear the spirit of God is something that you practice. 
Tonight when you pray in your house, when you're alone, sit there and say, Spirit of God, speak to me. Thank you.